Hello everybody, so in this video we're going to try to achieve something like this where we're breaking up the beginning or the ground it's kind of like a wood style uh, we're going to aim to do something better than this but this was a quick test to, that I was doing beforehand before recording this video so let's take a look um, I have all this. Basically, this is just the background. It's not anything that's going to be done here. So I just hit it with a um, box around it. So let's create the ground with the geometry node and the object level ground. And then in here, we're going to start off with box and I'm going to copy the Y parameter in the size, paste relative reference in the Y uh, center and uh, divide it by two. So that puts it on the ground no matter what the value of this is. Then let's try point 0.1 three and maybe three so this is going to be the individual boards themselves um, I feel like that seems like an appropriate size so I want to set up a um, area where we're going to be creating and I already have a camera so you can kind of see where the scene is um, I'm going to copy these over with a line. So let's create a line. And then let's visualize this here. So it's going up in the Y. I don't want that. I want it to go up in the X. I mean, go follow the X. Then on the length, let's copy this parameter and paste relative reference here and see what that does. It moves it over that way, which is kind of what we want, but um, we want that, but we want it centered on the origin. So let's just um, one or negative at the beginning, and then that will make it go in the right direction. So what happens is that as we extend this, it gets um, extended by itself this way. Okay, so I need to figure out for the length um, or for the length of the board, how are we gonna fit it into the points and the length here? So what we can do is we know that this is kind of the width here. So let's copy this parameter and then let's paste relative reference here. So if we just do a simple copy to points, geometry and template, you can see that we get that and that looks okay. Oops until we start adding more points and you can see that it's not quite um, working the way we want because it's just the exact size of that. So what we can do is say multiply times the number of points. So let's copy that parameter and paste relative reference. Uh, paste relative reference, there we go. And we get kind of closer, but you can see as we have different amounts, there's just different spacings. So it's really close here. Um, we just need to take this value here and subtract it by one before it's multiplied. So now I can add however many points I want and it will adjust for the scene here. So. I'm going to go to my camera view 
and let's add a transform here. And actually, I really want to be in the camera. And on this transform, I want to make sure that we are lined up kind of in the range that we want. Um, we're going to add some backwards and some forwards, so we need to keep that into account. But um, right now that works, so we can uh, use that. So about 31. Um, I know I'm going to need more than this, so let's just increase it to 45. So that just gives us a little bit more breathing room, maybe 40. Okay. So I want to stagger these uh, and I know that I'm going to want to make some adjustments so that each one is individually a little bit different. So instead of connecting it with a copy stamp directly like that, what I want to do is do a for each point loop. And then we can transform afterwards here. The points that we're going to be connected is from this line and then we can go here from the box and say copy two points connect this and then oops connect into that one and then connect it here so we basically get the, the same thing right now but um it gives us the ability to adjust things in the future because um, I want to add random color and things like that. So let's look at this here and then we're going to go ahead and add a point jitter. So the point jitter um, gives us jitter by default in all axes, but I only want it in the Z. So I'm going to take the um, scale axis on the X and the Y down to zero and you can see that we get some um, jittering here and then we can kind of push it to the point where it's overlapping without any gaps because if we go like that it's going to be too far but if we get it where it's overlapping a little bit that is perfect sorry about that let me turn the volume off on my phone okay so I have um, the ground staggered like this Oops. now um, what I want to do is duplicate it in each direction so that way we can have enough boards that are um, going to be needed to be able to achieve a ground. So I'm going to create a line and let's look at this really quick. We'll connect this again in a little bit. So in this line we're going to point it in the Z direction. And then um, with the box, we know that it's three units here. So let's copy parameter. Then over here, paste relative reference um, times, then open brackets. Then I'm going to copy this, uh, copy parameter, paste relative reference minus one. So this is the same thing we did on the other side, but this time it's going to go side to side. And then let's um, take this result here. So let's copy parameter, paste relative reference. So this is going to be negative, I believe. And then let's multiply it by 0.5, which is the same as dividing it by we get it put there centered and we can 
adjust this as needed. Okay, so from here, let's do another uh, for each point. We can connect this and then we'll say copy to point. Connect this side, connect that side, and then connect this to the output. So here we can see that we have two. We can expand this and there shouldn't ever be any overlap. And then we can connect this to that transform again. So I want to get it so that it is actually with the transform. Let's look at the camera view. Maybe we can adjust the transform a little bit so that way we can push it back in the Z. It looks like we're going to need one more anyways, because we're already seeing the beginning there. So five. And I can do something kind of like that. <clears throat> OK, so I have the ground there. And um, there's extra pieces here and more stuff that we don't really need. So what I am going to do is use a clip node. I tried to use a Boolean before and that didn't work properly because I want to fracture it later and it kind of puts everything as a single piece. And I want to make sure that these planks I can break up into the individual um, like splinters and things like that. So that didn't work. But if you use a clip node, you can. So if we use clip, connect this here, and we turn on the gizmo tool, we can kind of see the tool here, how it is working. So um, the direction, let's point it in negative Z, one. Okay, and then the origin, let's look in the camera view and make sure that we go back all the way far enough like that. And then I'm gonna alt drag to make another copy of this. And then connect that there. This one's gonna be in the um, positive Z, uh, but it's going to be in the negative direction. So now that we have that there, we can adjust the origin until it is lined up with the wall. Um, Okay. Okay, so now oops. If we oops. If we look at this here, we have the um ends here that are open and we want to make sure those are closed. So we can do a um poly cap and do that there so that way our ends are all closed and then we can um, do a quick exploded view just to test to make sure that everything is exploded the way we anticipate it to. Um, so all the pieces are just individual planks of wood which is great that's what we want right now. Okay so we have these loops And I want the opportunity to be able to fracture this ahead of time, but I want to create variations of the fracture so that way they are not all fractured the same way. So let's look at setting that up. Let's um, create a 
ISO offset. Actually, I've heard that the, oops, uh, VD or convert VDB. Does that give us there? It's not really, that's for converting a VDB. Let's try one more poly. VDB from polygons. There we go. And then a VDB convert. And we're going to convert that to volume. Let's see if we can scatter points on that. So it's not really doing what I wanted it to. Um, I'm sure th there's a method. I've heard that like the VDBs are faster than the ISO offset. So I wanted to try that really quick. But um, since it's tried and true, let's just do an ISO offset. And here we can see that we have a smoke around there. It's a little bit hard to see. Let's increase the subdivisions. We can see that we have something there. And then we can scatter points on that. And let's give ourselves a little bit of room. And then I'm just holding control. Shift. There we go, Alt. We can create a dot node just so that it's a little bit better organized. Okay, so we have that and then we're gonna do a Voronoi fracture. And the polygons is that box, and the points are going to be here. And we should have a fracture right now, but it's not looking very splinter like. But we do have a fracture, so if we look at the exploded view now, we should see that we have individual chunks. It looks more like stone right now. So let's um, make this look more wood-like. So let's go into um, create a transform. Connect that there and then connect that there. And what I'm going to do here is tell it on the Z, actually on the X, let's put it at point 0.1. Oops, not translate, sorry, scale, point 0.1. There we go. So we get something thin like that. And then when we look at the eye, so offset, let's see if we have enough resolution to be able to still create some points, and we do. And then we can do the Voronoi fracture. And then afterwards, we need to um, create another transform, but we're going to do the opposite of this. So we're going to multiply it by 10. So when we do that, and let's turn off the templating here, we have some fractures going this way. So um, it is not the X that we want to do. It is the um, Z. So let's try that. And then over here, this is going to be 1, and the Z is going to be 10. So when we look at the exploded view, we can see it's more splinter-like. And if we want longer pieces, we can take the scatter and let's say like do 100 points. 
And I think for this one at this point, that is more than enough. Let's try 50. Okay, so that is good. Now what we should see is at each stage we have these um, planks and they are all fractured. They are all set up properly. Um, the only thing is that they're all like identical. You can see the pattern happening throughout the whole floor and in many cases this will be okay but let's try to get this to be a little bit more randomized so what i'm going to do is in the for loop on each one of these um, on the begin i'm going to create the meta import node and that basically gives us some extra details for the loop the iteration number and the um, numeration value things like that so I'm gonna do that and then I need to do that also on this node so now we have the iteration and things like that so now inside of this scatter node um, on the global seed here I'm gonna give it a random number and let's do fit zero one. Let's give it a random number based on the iteration number. So what we need to do is say um, detail and then open parentheses and it gives us an idea of what we need here. We need the node, then we need the attribute name and then um, the index. So the node that we need is this node. So we can do dot dot slash so it goes into the um, uh, upper one level up so outside of that node into the geometry level then we can do a um, type in for each and we got begin metadata one that's the one we want and then close parentheses comma and then we want to do iter or iteration and then we'll do index zero close parentheses so that finishes the random and we are it's a little bit hard to see so let me go to expression I just right clicked on the expression and go to expression edit expression and we should be able to see it all here I just copied and pasted it from here if it wasn't updated um, so this is the detail right here. That is good. So I need to close the random. And then uh, for the fit zero one, we need a, a beginning and end. So we're going to say, uh, we'll try from zero to like a hundred thousand. Just so that there's different values in there. Apply. So let's look at it at this stage here, that template and then there. So when we look at it, we should see like, let's look at this corner right here, this kind of long slender and it's coming up to the point like that. Each corner is different. It's not the same anymore. So that's good. There is going to be a problem right here. And that is when we get to the second one. Um, if we look at here, we have that kind of short piece. And we look at over here, we have that short piece. And then we go to the next one, we have that same piece there. So um, when we duplicate it the second time, we are getting copies of it. So how do we um, account for that? So we can go back into the expression and basically we're gonna copy this detail 
we're going to take that iteration number and multiply it by another um, iteration number. But this time, instead of the begin one, we're actually going to say do begin two. So I have to go in here and say begin two. Apply. And it's going through. And then now you can see that that shifted. So there's going to be a different one for each one. It's going to be a little bit easier to see here. So there's a long one here. There's a short one here. Uh, a long one, short one medium size one, a tiny one here. So we can see that they're all completely different right now. So we can go all the way to the end and we have a ground to work with. Let me save my project so we don't lose it. And then let's go back to frame. Well, it's frame 10 because I'm cropping off the beginning. If we look over here, it is um, just settling in into its position up to frame 10 and then at frame 10 the animation starts. So if I go to frame 10 and play it, you can kind of see what the animation looks like. Um, there's some issues with the animation, but it's going to be good enough for us to get this effect working. Okay, so now I want the um, strike. So if we look at the strike, it's kind of coming in an angle this way. So we're going to break the ground coming this way. And you'll see these pieces fly up over here. Uh, but in this section, what I want it to do is actually have some smaller pieces here as well. So we're going to add that now. What we're going to do is create a line and let's point it in the X direction and X Z direction that looks about kind of it's like in a 45 degree angle so we can play with it um, there that looks good okay and then kind of start it here and then I'm going to move it up uh, 0 0.05 since the ground is um, 0.1 tall. That way it's in the middle of there. And let's visualize this here now. And then we can adjust the length. Let's template this one here. Oh, I kind of guessed it a good amount there. Let's look at the point. Right now we have two points, so we're going to need a lot more points. Let's say I'm going to do like 100 points, 200. Okay, that's okay. And then let's add a point jitter. So that's good. That's going to be kind of like our area where the um, point jitter is going to be happening. Then let's scale this down. And then I'm going to scale down the Y a little bit more individually. So it stays within there. Now we can kind of adjust these values here. There we go. So we have some points to fracture this. And then I'm just going to do a Voronoi fracture. And then we need a set of points. We're going to add these. And it's going to go through and make some more breaks. And Let's look at this and turn off the points. You can see kind of coming along here, we have a lot more smaller breaks. 
along the path that we're going to actually uh, be breaking the ground on. And let's um, look at it in an exploded view. And let's bring the scale down just so that you can kind of see, hopefully, that that breaking is happening there. So I do like it and I like the direction mostly, but I want to make sure that it is a little bit more where the sword is actually hitting. Although you probably won't be able to tell from the camera angle, but let's make it a little bit better. And let's get it here. So that sets up a little bit better, um, but let's do, this is one. There, okay. So then I can all the way down over here and we should see the fractured pieces. Just needs a little bit of time to cook. Okay. So let's look at this here. It's probably after the point jitter. Nope, it all looks good. It's a little bit offset, so let's make it a smaller value. Let's see what that looks like down at the end. Could also be because of the exploded view. So that looks a little bit better. Let's turn off the exploded view. Yeah, it was because of the exploded view. So I want to, I'm just going to do undo till I get it where it's lined up. And if I get it here, I should see the fractures kind of lining up right with the sword. Almost, almost, almost. There we go. That looks really good. Okay. So I'm going to delete this exploded view because I don't need that. I just need to see the ground. OK, so I'm going to save this. And then we are going to take a look at doing the simulation, so I want to go all the way down to the beginning. And we're going to do an RBD fracture. So we're going to go to rigid bodies with the ground. Um, we're going to do RBD fractured object, packed objects is fine. So if I push play, we should start seeing this kind of falling down into the ground. Okay, that's okay. Let's do a ground plane. Um, we could do that inside of collisions up here and create a ground plane. And I'm going to turn off the visibility of that. We don't need it visible, but it will prevent it from falling down. Something we will see is that now that I stopped, it's going to be kind of shards moving up and stuff like that. So if we look at it in the render view, we should see that the ground is not staying together, even though it's like right on the ground. Let's 
well, it's a little blown out and I'm going to have to tweak the render, but um, you can kind of see it there where there is um, something that's kind of protruding and it's basically like all of those pieces are being animated because they're being affected by gravity and trying to settle in. You can kind of see it as I move the slider there. So what we're going to do, let's go back to the rigid bodies. Let's do a glue adjacent. And then we'll select the ground and then push and turn the pneumatic keypad. And let's take a look at this now. Should hold it together much better. Okay. And then let's turn off the brain really quick. And I want to look at the animation and see where it hits. So at 30, it's not hitting. And at 31, it is hitting. So what I want to do is at frame 30, let's go back out, go to the auto dot network and tell it that the start frame is frame 30. So that way we're not calculating a whole bunch of stuff that we don't need to calculate. So obviously there is an issue here where we have the ground once it starts simulating, but we have nothing beforehand. So we can adjust that. Let's go into the ground node here. Let's create, let's turn off this templating. And right here, we shouldn't see anything, but we see something here. So let's do a switch node. And I'm going to connect this here. I'm going to click Alt and add a dot there. So just for organization. So um, now there should be the ground here, but then over here, nothing is going to be um, calculated because we're not switching over. So at frame 30, actually let's do it at frame 29. We are selected on input um, zero, which is that Voronoi fracture. And then the dot input is going to be um, on frame 30. We're going to go to one and switch over. Okay. So, and then I just alt clicked to set keyframes on each one of those. So let's go back to the object level and let's go ahead. And let's look in the camera view and play. So because I am not simulating anything before 10, I don't need to go beforehand. So um, I can start off at frame 10. So that way it's already in its pose and everything. There we go. So we have the animation and um, we don't have the simulation running right now, but we can see that we are smoothly transitioning from one geometry to the next. And um, there are some options with what you want to do with this, like you could in the ground plane, like right now I just copied over from the Voronoi fracture. I got to look at how it renders. Um, it might not render exactly the way I want it to. So I might do like a, another chain of this section here. So I could copy and paste that then move it over here somewhere. And then from here, instead of connecting it after the Voronoi fracture, we can just connect it from the box into here. So that should give us a unfractured version. And then let's cut this here. And then we'll connect this polyfill here but we need to switch the inputs here because you can see that the polyfill now is on the bottom where the um, Voronoi fracture was, but we need it to be at this point. 
So what you'll see is that we have the unfractured geometry and then it only fractures here after it hits. Maybe I'll adjust these keyframes. Um, let's, I'm holding shift and then click, hold and drag over these so that I can just um, middle mouse button drag and shift it over one frame. So it's good, good, good. And then it hits and everything fractures. Just so that way we have um, clean uh, breaking points and whatnot. So we have a fractured version and then a non-fractured version. Okay. So now what I want to do is start the breaking process. It's not switching over. Let me double check. Make sure that this has animation. It's one. Zero. Okay, it is fractured. It's switching. Not sure why it's not visualizing here, but we'll see in a moment. It might be because we haven't calculated out the um, simulation. So I can try that really quick. Turn on the brain. Double click the auto dot network. I'm going to push L in here to lay it out. And you can see that it is now calculating. It's trying to calculate all these frames here. So let's go back to the beginning. And then now it's through and going to start calculating out for the first frame, I just want to see if it switches. It does switch here. That's good. So I'll just stop that there. So this is looking right. Let's look at the ground. That looks right in here. Okay, it looks right. Maybe I had the uh, visibility on the wrong node. So that's something to watch out for. Okay, so let's go about breaking it. Um, I'm going to create a, another geometry node. And this is going to be a collision object. Okay, that's what we're going to use to break the ground. And let's create a uh, sphere. Polygon. That's fine. Put it underneath. Okay. I'm going to turn off the brain here for a moment so that we can animate this. So I am going to set keyframes for the um, center of the sphere. 30, 31. Okay, so let's say 29. Set a key for the default position. Then at 31, I want to make sure that it is positioned correctly. So maybe I should look at it from the top view. So I'm going to hold space and the two button. And I want to make sure that we are positioned correctly. And then I'm going to push alt and click on center. And that means that here we are kind of shifted in the wrong position. I'm just going to readjust that and then alt click center so that way we are animating this way. I'm gonna now go I don't know how long we want it to last. Say about that long. 
let's go to the um, the perspective view here and just push spacebar one. And then let's look at the wireframe. You might not be able to see it. Yeah, we're not going to be able to see it here. But I'm going to guess from right now, let's go space two. It's going to be something kind of like this. And push alt and click there. So let's go back to the perspective view. Let's select the camera and kind of see. Let's go outside of here. What's the path of this sphere going to do? And it's going to move through the scene kind of like that. So it's going to go boom. And let's see if the timing is good right now. It's a little bit hard to tell because it's uh, lagging because there's a lot going on in the scene. So I'm going to create a flip book. And the range is fine. Start. Actually, let's stop that. I think my previous settings had motion blur on it. So let me make sure that I'm turning off motion blur. And then let's start this. No go fast there. OK, let me pause here and then um, we can look at the flip book to see if the timing is what we want. OK, so um, we have the flip book ready. Let's play it. I think that's probably OK. Um, the other thing that I want to check is let's click on the ground so that we can see its wireframe and see if the path that we kind of had it on um, matches where we want to be. And it's really close, but we want it to be a little bit further down the X. So I'll adjust that. Uh, collision object here on frame 48. Oops. Adjust it to be somewhere around there. And then Alt click it's right over that keyframe. And let's click on the ground and just make sure that the traveling path lines up where our more detailed fractures are going to be yet, and it looks like they are. Okay, so you go back to the camera view and go, go to the collision object. And let's make this a collision static object. And we don't need to see it anymore. That's just, uh, we created it so that we can uh, do the ground breaking, but we don't need it after the ground has broken. And let's turn on the simulation brain again. Save before I go forward. And then let's play. And it is not calculating out correctly. So let's go back to the beginning. Let's click on this. Let's reset simulation and turn off real time. Let's see if that does something for us. OK, so the reason nothing is happening right now, even though we animated and everything, let's look in the Autodot network. We have our collision object here. And if we look at it. Uh, oh, I turned off the visibility. Um, let's look at the collision guide. Are we going to be able to see it now? It doesn't matter. Uh, basically, we need to use deforming geometry because we animated it inside of the uh, geometry node rather than at the object level. And so we can do that. And then let's go back and click from camera one, go to object level, and let's push play and see the destruction happen. So that's better, but it's moving the whole thing with it. So. Let's play around with the glue strength and see if we can control it with the glue strength. 
Right now it is at 10,000. Let's try just like 100. And let's go back to object view, object level. So I like that a lot. It is doing what I want it to do. And everything else around it kind of fractures, which is kind of cool. So let's save this. Um, I do want to make an adjustment because as we look at the hit happening, I want at this point for it to be breaking up already. So let's go to the collision object and I'm going to move these two keyframes over one frame. And let's see what that adjustment does for us. I went in the wrong direction. <laughs> Let's go select both of these middle mouse button drag. So I just did a shift to click drag. Let's go in this direction. Okay. Let's look at this now. Nope. So let's turn off the brain for a minute so that we can um, look at the geometry here. So it comes up, boom. But it's not calculating out at this stage. OK, so I'm going to put this back. It was at frame 30, and it looks like The simulation maybe is not calculating out where I want it to. Let's push this back another frame. OK, that looks like it's going to hit right on the right frame. Um, let's tell the simulation to start one frame sooner. Let's do frame 29 and see what happens there. So again, saving, going back to the beginning of the animation, turning on the simulation brain, and let's see what happens here. That looks way better. The timing is better and everything. Okay, so I'm going to see if I can calculate it all out and then create a flipbook so that we can look at the timing and everything, make sure everything works right. So I'll pause here and let it finish the cache and also um, do a flipbook. Okay, so this is what the simulation looks like right now. And I am liking that a lot. So let's go ahead and... Um, add some debris and we're going to actually convert that to be um, smoke. So let's see, I have the ground here. We have the switch. So we'll connect it in there. Let's um, come back out here and I'm going to, with this ground object selected, click uh, debris. And then it's trying to cook it because I'm on frame 33, which almost there. OK, so if we look at this, there's a lot of stuff going on. Um, there's a whole bunch of particles all the way from the beginning and everything. Um, it created 
three nodes for us, the debris source, the debris sim, and the actual debris itself. What we're looking at right now is the debris node. Um, we're going to actually remove that and we're going to remove the simulation. But we're going to be using the debris source. So let's double click on this. And now that we are in here, let's see what it looks like. And we have a whole bunch of particles. And right here, it's going to switch over to this. And then we lose all the particles. Um, so we need to tell it that we want to see um, the particles kind of baseline where it's going to be creating everything from uh, in the debris source here. We want it to start on frame 29 because that's going to be our rest frame. So now if we go here, you can see that the particles are emitted there and actually it doesn't um, switch over until this frame. So let's do frame 30 and let's see if that works if not it has to be 31 okay let's do frame 31 there we go and now we have the particles happening so you can see that the particles are being uh, generated here um, and it has a color associated with it. Let me stop the playback right now. So we have this color ramp that's just showing kind of the lifespan and how old the particles are doing. Um, so the ones that are just being uh, generated and activated are yellow. And then the older they are, they get close to purple. So uh, let's switch the lifespan to be at point one, what you'll see is that those particles start dying off much quicker. You, we still have a bunch of um, particles that are gray because those are inactive. Um, and the particles, even though we have a lifespan of one, they just get to purple and then they don't do anything. So what we can do is move unrelease. What you'll see if we play this now, we only have the um, particles that are part of the simulation there. Now, another thing that we can do is tell it to remove at end of life. So once it dies, once it gets to this time, it's actually going to remove those particles from the scene. So that's great. I like the way that is going and you can see as the smoke, as the destruction happens, it kind of dissipates and there's less particles going around. So that's great. That's what we want. Now we're going to do a um, particle sim for the, or pyro sim. So uh, I'm going to do pyro configure billowy smoke. So we'll use the billowy smoke. Um, solver and if you look and we plug that in it just has a whole bunch of nodes set up all the way through um, but it's connected to a torus shape and we don't want that shape we want the particles that we um, had here so let's delete that and let's connect the particles and let's see if they emitted anything and they shouldn't at this stage so, um, volume scatter, let's try keep input. Nope, that's not, oh, yeah, there we go. So now it's emitting uh, from those um, individual points. Uh, 
what I do want to see is if we actually see these points in the render. So let's go out here and we need to turn the visibility for this on. And let's go to the render view here just so that we can see. So this was a test that I was doing before. I just want to see if we get balls for each one of those particles here. So it's taking a little bit of time to cash it in. So I don't think we're seeing any of the points. We're just seeing the smoke. Let's look over here. I'm just trying to get where the points may be. Because it would look weird if we had a whole bunch of little um, spheres jumping around inside of the scene. And actually, if we look at it here, we don't really see any of those points. We're only seeing the um, smoke. So if we click down here, all the points are gone. So that's perfect. That's what we want. Okay. So go to the beginning let's go to camera one and let's play this let's make sure that the render is stopped so that way there's what's going on okay so I like that um, let's go into the debris source and go to the pill billowy smoke uh, pyro look let's put the density lower just so that it's kind of an accent but it's not like overwhelming the scene that's good so let's look at this here and you can see the smoke kind of going through the scene which is exactly what I want and I don't want it to be um, too strong we can look at it around this frame and see what the smoke is going to look like when we render it and then we can add um, shaders and materials and stuff like that to the smoke if we needed to but we can see it's pretty sparse here it's very light just like we can see inside of the viewport here and we can stop this really quick and let's see a frame that we might see kind of more dense smoke let's take that and render this so what we're going to want to look is kind of like at this section to see if it's kind of dense enough for what we are looking for I can see a little bit of smoke there but I think I want it to be a little bit darker than that so let's go into the debris density let's just try like one I like that I'm happy with that Okay, and then if we jump over to like somewhere in the 73 frame range, we should see that we have some dust in the air. But again, it's not like overwhelming taking up the um, visual real estate. It's just kind of dissipating. 
And that's another thing that we can do is adjust um, the um, smoke solver, the pyro solver. If we go, I think it's in shape. Look. Fields, fields here, dissipation. So we can increase this and it should dissipate a bit quicker. So it's dense, but then as it goes through and um, it's going to dissolve, it's going to dissolve much sooner. than it would have um, with a lower value. So you can see even before we're getting to that 72 or 783 frame, it's almost gone. So this speeds up like how far, how fast it dissipates off the scene. And then actually we're almost at the end here. So let's see, can look at it a little bit faster. And what I'm going to do now, let's go to the object level here. Let's click off of it. I'm going to save my project and I am going to do a flip book and then pause the video and I'll be right back when this finishes and we can look at it in real time. All right. So playing this through here, we can kind of see how the smoke gets incorporated into the um, destruction that we have here. And I like it. It's all looking pretty awesome. Okay, so let me close that. And let's take a look at setting up a few other things. Um, if we go to the ground, let's go way up here and add a color. And here, I'm just going to kind of have bit of a brown color. Something kind of like that. And right now we're not getting any of the color because when we do the DOP import over here, um, it is not bringing in the color information. So if we actually look at before we switch over from one ground to the next with this switch node, escape over here. Let's see if we're looking at this state. Let me switch over to there just um, headlight only so that way we can see the color that we're manipulating here um, here we have the color on the ground it is not coming over when we do this we got to do all the simulation again and everything but um that's because with the dop import here we're gonna uh, fetch unpack geometry and that should resolve it so let's set this up here So let's turn it 
turn off that. And it is looking black, but I believe if we go into the render view here, we should see it brown now. There we go. So that's good, um, but I want the inside parts here to look a little bit like lighter, like more um, raw wood. And what I'm going to do is after the Voronoi fracture, apply that shading to it. So let's um, stop this. And then here we're going to add a color. And if we look at the Voronoi fracture, we get inside and outside. So what we want to do is adjust the inside color. So we can go here, do inside. And instead of point, I'm going to do vertex. And then we can do kind of like a light, lighter inside color like that. And let's look at the render now. Calculate here. And we're not getting that right now. Let's break this out over here. Let's connect it all the way at the end. Let's see if that does any difference. Here, just remove the group, and we're doing inside. And then let's render. I want to check this area here and make sure that it gets it. And click in here. Yeah, there we go. Not sure why it didn't work on the beginning over there, but we're fine now that we plug it in later at the end. So that looks great. I like that a lot. And if we go out here, I think it's just because it didn't recalculate now um, because I was changing things with that solver. It doesn't have the smoke, um, but that's okay. So one other thing that this um, part here would be nice to have is some variation of the um, color that we have here. So I can go into the ground. And I'm going to do it in a very similar way to what we did with the um, seed values. So I'm actually going to copy all that. And then I'm going to go to the color here. And let's just adjust this color. I'm going to paste what we had here. Actually, it's about 2.26. OK. And let's just go to expression because I know it's already going to be long edit expression. Copy it here. And I'm going to take the information from both of those uh, metadata nodes using the iteration. And I'm going to do it in a range between um, point two and Point two eight for the amount of red. And now that we have that, I'm going to accept and see if we got any variation here. Oh. 
So I bet we're going to actually get variation on this one because we got two chains happening here. One for this one and one for this one. So on one side, it's actually not going to um, calculate that. That's okay. Um, we'll do this a slightly different way. Let's put this down and put it at point two six, which was kind of where we were at. And then we will look at, uh, instead of using this, we'll just assign a different value to each one of the pieces. Okay, I actually <laughs> changed my mind. What I'm going to do is um, set up two color nodes, one going to each direction. And then I am going to do an expression for each one of these. So on here, Let's go in, so the one going to the one that is going to be broken, we're going to do this and then let's put it like from point two to like point uh, four. Okay, and then I will accept. And then let's copy all of this. And then we're going to switch it to the metadata here. In my case, it just switched the one to a two because we have one over here and then this is two. And then same thing over here. So let's go over here, paste, and then let's edit the expression. Oops, paste. And I'm going to switch to two and two. There we go, and then keep everything else the same, except, and then now we have a kind of floor that is uh, varying in colors. And it should match on this side here. So let's do it. Let's look at it before the Voronoi fracture. I broke something. Let's just go all the way over here down to, actually, I don't even need to go that far. I can go here. We should see the ground. It's just calculating some of the breaking that we're doing for each individual piece. It's on two of six, so let me pause and then we'll see it. Okay, so we can see that the we have each one of these um, matching up with what we have over here. So we can go from polyfill to polyfill. And we should see that the only shift is that we have those um, ridges that were created. Okay, another thing, like the, the fracture that we have over there. Another thing that we can do with this now Go up to there so that way it calculates that and we're done with um, all these calculations. Now I want to go up to the top here and I have this original box and this is going to make me have to calculate everything out again but I'm going to um, cut those off and then look at this box and just do a poly bevel and let's add a tiny bit of rounding on the corner uh, let's do two divisions there 
There we go. And then we can connect these down. And frame 10. So I'm just going to go all the way down here to the color. And we can see we have a little bit more interesting looking surface here now, especially once we take into account the lighting and everything. And then I'm going to go through, let's go back to the object level, look through the camera, and um, I'm going to cache everything out and do uh, a flip book really quick so that we can see how this is looking. Okay, so now this is what we have here. I am liking that. Okay, some last few tweaks before um, we render. So um, if we look at the render here, Let's render this. Do, do, do. So we have some smoke. We have these pieces. Um, I have depth of field turned on. So some of them are going to be out of focus. But I want to look at the actual um, objects here. We can see that they are moving fast and we should have some motion blur. But I think all we have right now is the depth of field like this one. You can see this is a motion, but it's very crisp, the edges. So we need to make sure that we can set up some motion blur. Um, if we go to the out and you are inside of your renderer, um, I have enabled the under the render tab, the enable depth of field and allow motion blur. Um, now let's go back to the object level and then on the ground here, we need to make sure that the ground has velocity. So if we turn on the uh, display point trails, we can see that we're not getting any point trails. Um, you can do a trail object here and then um, tell it to compute as velocity. And then it's going through and calculating it out. Let's see if we're getting any velocity here. We're really not. So um, the other method that you can do is a point velocity. And that works pretty nicely. look at this. Oh, I have the, there we go. There's the velocity. Um, actually, let's look at the trail maybe. So if we have the trail instead of preserve original, we have compute velocity. There we go. So it's uh, pretty similar. So if we jump back and forth now here to here, it looks pretty much the same. Um, and then we didn't have any, so you can choose to do the trail or the, uh, point velocity. I am going to use the point velocity and that gives us velocity on all these pieces here. So when we render, we should have some, um, motion blur on the pieces that are flying pretty fast now. Uh, 
and we are not. So there's one more thing we have to do. We have to go out to the object level, go to render sampling, and over here where it says geometry velocity blur, it says no blur. We want to change that to be velocity blur. So what you'll see now is that we have these uh, chunks being blurred out because they are moving fast, which is what we want. Okay, and then um, to adjust that, you can adjust the shutter speed on the camera. So if you go to camera, uh, go to sampling, you can adjust the shutter time. And the higher the number, the more blur it is, the lower the number, the less blur. Uh, so we're here in the camera. And then for the depth of field, if you select your camera, go into the um, show handle tool here, then right click. You can go to focus handle, which is the one that I'm showing right here right now. And basically anything in this range is going to be in focus and everything else is going to be out of focus. So maybe so we can see a little bit more of that wood in focus. Do it something like this. Maybe line the main focus part with his face. Do something like that. And go back to my camera view. Let's save this so that we don't lose anything. And I want to um, also go to my scene here. I have this uh, bound just so that it could um, not show the brick background that I had, but now I can bring that back in. And let's just render a still and see it, if it looks the way we want it before we render the final sequence. So let me pause this. Once the still is done, um, I can come back and show you guys. Actually, this is rendering pretty quick here so that we can get a good idea of what we have. And I'm liking this. I think maybe the brick is a bit too um, bright. But everything here I am happy with. Maybe I can adjust the um, color of the smoke, but this is kind of okay too. Maybe I can add a little bit of brown so that it matches kind of like if it were sawdust or something like that. Um, but I, I like it. It's looking great. Okay, so... I'm going to pause the video here, just make some tweaks on the materials in the shader um, with the um, shader. You can assign a volume shader to the, um, so you can do something like billowy smoke and then you can adjust the settings on it. So we can bring that there and then um, assign that to the smoke. And then uh, once that's assigned, you can uh, adjust the smoke color and things like that. So, and then um, play around with some of the settings, make sure that it's looking the way you want it to look. Um, so, like I said, I'm gonna pause here. And then when we come back in a moment for you guys, we can see what the final output looks like. So I wanted to go through and just uh, show you guys something um, with the new version of Houdini. Um, I thought that with the material I assigned it to this that we can adjust it, but it's really not that way anymore. What we want to do is go into the Pyro Look Solver, and then we have or Node, and then we have uh, the ability to adjust the color here. So. Um, I think we can go and do it pretty wacky color. Um, but you can see kind of what we are looking at.
So I'm going to get it kind of like similar color to the um, brown that we have from the wood. And then over here, I'm going to add another. I, I removed the first one and then going to remove another one and then kind of just tweak the color here. And then you can play with the um, attributes to get exactly what you want, but um, that's kind of how I'm playing with it. Maybe um, you can kind of adjust the colors and whatnot and the look inside of this node. So um, yeah, adjust the color there. And then, like I said, be right back. Okay, so um, I was noticing while I was setting up for rendering that there is a little issue with the um, way the um, color shows up. So over here, we can see that we're having all the appropriate tiles. And over here, we are not. Actually, we're not even seeing the right planks. But when we look at it at the Voronoi fracture here, this is good. So let me see if we cut this and reconnect it. So this is still good here. This is still good here. And at this point, this is where it breaks. So let's also try to reset the simulation here. And go back to the beginning. And now we can see we're getting at that. So I had to just reset the simulation. Um, so just letting you guys know that that is a issue. So um, now it should be fine. So if we go over here to the simulated frames, we should have the correct color happening and the fracturing and everything. So um, if you are having that issue as well, just make sure that you um, reset your simulation and then it should calculate everything out with the new geometry and the new colors. All right. Okay, so this is how the render came out. I think it's pretty fun looking. I mean, there's always more things that you can do to up grade it and get the effect looking even better but I am happy with the way this has turned out um, that is it for this tutorial I hope you enjoyed it we'll see you guys in the next video bye